Welcome. This video details the bank deposit print functionality of iBase. When receipts have been processed, such as uh, check tender types or cash, where a deposit slip might be required, the system has the option for a bank deposit slip under your All Options or Favourites menu. In here, you have a few selections you can make firstly, such as to include all company branches, or if you do have separate branches and want to uh, separate them on your deposit slip, you can untick and then select which one you want. Likewise with banking locations, if you have multiple locations banking into the one bank account, you can produce separate deposit slips by using banking locations. Um, if you have more than one bank account that you want to bank into, you can uh, untick here to select which bank account or leave it ticked to include all. If you accept credit card payments, you have the option to exclude them so they can be produced on a separate list or pr produce only credit cards or include everything together. <clears throat> There is a reprint function. Once a deposit slip has been produced, you have the ability to go back and reprint. For this exercise, however, we haven't printed it yet, so we're going to click on Select, which will then display the available receipts that have not yet been included on a deposit slip. The total amount of these receipts is displayed for you so that you can verify that against the checks and cash that you're holding to take to the bank. The reference is entered in here, so that'll be your check number for the checks, and it'll be your tender type for things like allocations and cash. Allocations are obviously for zero amounts, so we do have the option for you to omit them and produce them in a separate deposit slip. So you'll see an omit column here. By default, the entries are not omitted. If you want to exclude anything, you can click uh, click on the omit column and the no will become yes and that will exclude those items. You can see the amounts being omitted are now moved across to that column. If for some reason I wanted to omit one of the entries that actually does have an amount, you'll see this total also is reduced accordingly when that amount is removed. But for this exercise, um, we will leave the uh, amount there. Actually, that um, second entry, if you click a second time, you'll see always appears in there. If you have uh, a long list of receipts that have been entered and you're wanting to separate them into multiple different deposit slips, you can click always, which means that it will stay omitted by default the next time you come in. And you can keep doing that until you eventually do want to release it and then just click again and it will change it back to no and include it in the next deposit slip. So once you have all the correct items selected, if you want to make any changes to the uh, selection, you then can click on run report. You have the option to preview it or send it straight to your printer. Or if you want to, you can choose to email it or store it in a cabinet. We'll just preview it for the moment. The report will then be displayed on the screen and you'll see that it contains all the bank branch and um, drawer information, check numbers, etc. that your bank might require for checks. The cash are totaled, the checks are totaled and any other tender types that are included will be totaled. And then at the bottom you will have your entire um, deposit amount in words. If your bank account details have been entered into the system, they will be included at the top. So everything that you need to go to the bank with should be included and should be, and they should accept this as a valid deposit slip, which saves you having to rewrite one by hand afterwards. So I'll just hop back out of that report and back to, that will clear my deposit slip screen back to um, where it started. If I now hit select, you'll see that only the two that I omitted are still remaining because the others have already been included. So they, they can't be included in more than one deposit slip. Once they've been allocated to a deposit slip, the only way to reproduce them is using this reprint option here. So I'll just show you what happens with the reprint option. If you tick reprint, the deposit slip number field opens up and you can then either type in or click to select the one that you want to produce. Um, it is important to put a deposit slip number in when you are reprinting, 
or the system will produce every deposit slip that has ever been generated and that could be uh, a fairly significant number in some databases. The last thing still to tell you about deposit slips, when you are in this screen um, it will be locked from anyone else accessing it so if you are if you've completed what you need to do it is important to click back to home or all options or hop out of that screen so that if somebody else needs to come in and do their deposit slip uh, for another banking location or for whatever reason they will be able to access that screen. Uh, that concludes our video on printing our bank deposit slip. Thank you.